Hey, it's Thursday, and we wanted to try to tackle this topic before we move on because it's uh, it's kind of exciting for me this week. And this is uh, Thursday, but hopefully we'll have well we'll have an answer over the weekend or maybe in the next week. But we finished our first modeling of uh, some a product that will be sold on the internet that was designed using plasticity. Whoa, yeah. If you're into 3D printing and you want to get into a CAD software, it's going to cost you. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. And it's always subscription-based, which I I am totally so against that, unfortunately. It's it's like it's the way the world seems to work these days. It's kind of like trying to live without a cell phone. <laughs> uh, there's, there's free CAD, which I think is horrendously a horrible program and very frustrating, especially for someone new. Uh, getting into like CAD software where they're trying to learn how to design them, your own products and things. I think you can have a lot of problems with it. One of the ones that's not bad for starters for the very, very basic primitive tools is uh, Tinkercad. Tinkercad is not bad. It's, it's, uh, it's gotten a little bit better over the years. I heard something recently that Fusion 360 is making some, uh, or Autodesk, excuse me, the owners, <laughs> Autodesk. Uh, is cutting back on their workforce and uh, in big ways, like something like 1,300 layoffs or something like that going on, and they're structuring themselves probably to make more money for corporate because that's what companies do. And I have a funny feeling that Tinkercad is going to be, you know, might come under the target. So we may lose Tinkercad or Tinkercad might become this much and no more you know and I, it's like that's kind of frustrating because it was a free program like i said it was very sort of primitive tooling but you could design and make things on 3d printers with it and so it wasn't it wasn't a horrendously horrible program but it's just very uh very very slow very sluggish program to work with didn't really like it myself i went to fusion 360 but I am now sort of looking at the situation with uh, what's going on at Autodesk and thinking even Fusion 360 could become under threat of all this uh, corporate restructuring and whatever they're doing. Uh, Employee-wise, it's really scary because it's like it sounds to me like the subscription plan might go uh, up in price or maybe, yeah, I don't think it'll go down in price. That would be wow, you know, but at the, the same time maybe it will I, I just don't really know where we're going to go with fusion 360 but in the meantime i have switched over uh in february i picked up a new program that's a cad program that designs stuff and you can make stuff just like fusion 360 but it's called plasticity and you've probably heard me ranting and raving a little bit about how you know this is an interesting program is it any good and that's that's the question that everybody keeps asking me you know is it any good and it's like uh i don't know i have the first problem is the 30-day trial i'll tell you the truth plasticity can you hear me 30 days is not enough i think you need 90 days on a cad program to really get start to get a little bit comfortable with it 30 days doesn't uh, it's you know it doesn't seem to really give you the uh a sampling of what this thing can do uh, there is some fantastic programs out there on YouTube that show you know some fancy different things that it can do and make and create and whatever uh, but when you go to print it it you know is it is it any good and you know this sort of thing and it, it the program has a lot of really great features I think it's a very strong program also I found out through trial and error you can import stuff that you already have on file from somebody else and you can you know manipulate and modify it a little bit so it's like kind of like a mesh thing it was like whoa it was like, okay this is cool too my biggest thing with uh plasticity is it's different from fusion 360 so i am i'm banging my head and running into walls constantly by mistake because you know obviously don't know the program I know Fusion 360 and this doesn't work like that, so therefore, boo, I, I get frustrated and I'm lost. But uh, this past week, we just shipped it out again. This is a new sample, uh, a new product that I have uh, exclusively designed on plasticity only from scratch. And we've shipped the, I think this is about the third sample now where we've done some updating and changes uh, with a, an engineer. And we shipped it out for uh, analysis to a fellow over in Phoenix, Arizona. He's an engineer. He's going to sit down and go over this thing. 
but uh, hopefully the uh, this thing will become a production product for me with the rest of my three print farm stuff and that's gonna be really cool it's taken a long time to get you know to where we are kind of thing but uh, part, mostly my fault I won't take anybody else in I had to, I had to learn plasticity enough to get through where I could design the model and create it and it was everything would come together I had some interesting problems uh, that I ran into with Fusion 360 over the years and plasticity is sort of not having the problems that I was running into and I'll show you one uh, I'll just demonstrate it real quick but uh, Fusion 360 is great very powerful unbelievable I think it's the best CAD software out there it just it just is but it's so expensive that it is beyond the reach of a small consumer guy like me. You know, it's like, I just can't afford to do it. And there's no way to make it work that I know of, but the product I had, it had a half round circle like this at one end, and then this is all just a square block back here kind of thing. But it was a product we were developing and working with at the time, and it turned out it was a little bit short, like maybe a couple of millimeters, and it was like, this will work better if it's a little bit longer. and the spot that needed to be longer was this half round corner over here on the model. So I took the face on three on uh, Fusion 360 and extended it one millimeter. Didn't do anything else with the model. Printed it and what we got was a model that was two millimeters this way, too wide all of a sudden. And it was like, and what it had done is it had added a full one millimeter to everything, uh, which just threw it all out. So. Yeah, came up on a similar problem and it was like, okay, I'm gonna take this half round here, take the face and extend this one more millimeter out. And that, you know, to fix the problem was as far as, you know, being too short. And in plasticity, it didn't change this. It just moved the face over, which is what I wanted. So that was really strange because, you know, there's a, there's a big cost difference and price difference and backing and corporation, Autodesk, whatever behind all that. So. That was huge for me. That was like, man, that makes this thing better than <laughs> Fusion 360. But uh, we have, like I said, our first product. So I'm kind of excited to see how all this is gonna go down. But uh, it goes back to the question, is plasticity any good? And I think if you can learn the program, like I had to with Fusion 360, uh, I think plasticity uh, has some real good strong points. It has some weak points, granted. Uh, uh, I love the way you can make a hole in Fusion 360, which you cannot do with plasticity. You just, you can't, you know, you can't duplicate that simplistic, you know, hover over with the button, hit it, and go, oh, here's a little menu. I'll, I want to punch a hole right here. Uh, I want the hole this wide, this deep, you know, this sort of thing. Like, you can do it really nicely on Fusion 360. Plasticity, you have several, a lot more steps involved, and there's a few things there that are just just not there that you would have to deal with uh, especially if you want near the bottom of the hole or anything like that where you want a, a fillet or a chamfer anything going on like that fusion 360 you can punch that in angle it and everything and just hit okay and it's like boom it's done you know uh, plasticity you're going to have to go through steps to get to attain the same level so it's like wow well, okay there is a problem there but it's not it's that's not a deal breaker fusion uh 360 the subscription fee i didn't check it this morning i meant to last time i checked i think it was around i was closing in around was it 700 a year for the basic or something like that it was it was an ungodly price oh they have a monthly and i think the monthly even is about 60 or 70 dollars something like that anyways i'm not a subscription guy so it's like not gonna happen you know i'll use the free version for now but Obviously, I need something better, and I need to be able to uh, store these files and bring them back in when I want so I can modify them. And again, Fusion 360 does it to a cloud surface, and then you bring it back in from the cloud in order to edit, you know, and it, and it remains edit editable, editable. Boy, am I, that, that is a tongue twister today. <laughs> yeah. So with plasticity, you can save the model and set it in your own computer on your own file and bring it back in if you want to further modify the model as you're going down the road with it and so it was like in some ways in a lot of ways oh that's better uh the other one of the other 
tripping hazard problems I ran into was uh, a lot of times we lose internet here and sometimes it's for a day or two, uh, not usually that long, but it might be three or four hours. It's enough to be, it's the moment I want to go on, you know, Fusion 360 to do something and of course the internet is uh, messed up and it's like, or too slow and it's like, I can't work with this right now. So what happens is you have to put the job aside and say, okay, we'll have to come back to this later. You know, and sometimes it sits for weeks or whatever before you get back to it. And with Plasticity, it doesn't require internet because you own the, own the product. Once you buy that software, it's in your computer. You can use it. You don't have to have an internet to use it either. Wow, awesome, you know. So I can go on the computer, not worry about internet speed or anything else, and go ahead and design and work with it. And I can create a folder in my directory and put any of my projects in that folder. And when I want to bring them back in, I can import them back into uh, Plasticity and work with that modeling. I think there's a lot to be said about this program right now. Uh, I'm really hoping that they will continue uh, to improve and make really good improvements that will work just that much better down the road. Uh, there, there's always a cost involved, isn't there? You know, uh, but the, uh, it, it just has that outlook that it looks like it could be a very good, powerful program, especially for people that are artsy, they say. They say it's for artists or something, but you know, if I design a product that's involving a, a tool or something, I don't see that as being artsy. But if I can do it in plasticity, I see it as being cost effective because I'm not paying a subscription fee per month and I can just design that product. Awesome, awesome, yes. You know, so the, the, the answer to the question is if you have the perseverance and some stubbornness, like me, <laughs> real hard headed, you know, and you buy that program and you force yourself to learn it, you'll probably do fantastic with it and you'll be able to produce the products you want on your 3D printers. And that's really what it comes down to. Uh, I had told somebody uh, one of the glitches I had, and they said, oh, that's a deal breaker. Well, it was only a glitch because I was causing the problem. We were able to fix the problem in plasticity once we realized what the what the errors were because I am stumbling in that program quite a bit and I'm having different, you know, variable, variable problems with it, but uh, it's all because I haven't fully learned how to deal with some of the different uh, items that are in there. The tooling works different from uh, others. I haven't seen anything like it, uh, I can't really compare it with anything because I don't see constraints all over my drawings and stuff. And uh, you can go back and make changes and move faces and cut and, and, and chamfer and all that stuff, which is really cool around, around you know, 3D modeling. It's like, man, that is so cool. But like I said, it's, it's sure it's artsy. You know, if you're an artist and you're artsy fartsy and you want to design something that's really wild, I think plasticity could be the one for you. But if you're like me, where you're trying to do more like uh, mechanical drawings for honest, you know, real world parts or something, I think plasticity can do it. It's just a matter of learning it. You know, that's, that's where the big question mark is. I uh, also have some new products I think that might be coming in shortly. I had said no to all products, all new tooling, anything. I said no, 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 because uh, theoretically we're moving. But I don't when we're we don't know when we're moving until the house sells. We're not moving, so uh, might be bringing some more stuff in as early as next week. So meantime, uh, thanks for checking in on us at Coffee and Tools, and <laughs> please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. Over and out.